Hello and welcome to a new interview from MinMax. MinMax is a Patreon about games, friends, and getting better. My name is Ben Hansen, and this, I'm very happy to say, is an interview with Alex Navarro, Vinny Caravella, and Brad Shoemaker from Nextlander. In this interview, we talk about their journey from Giant Bomb to create a new Patreon, which is doing unbelievably well. So if you want some insight into what that feels like emotionally to go through that journey, this interview is for you. We hope you enjoy it. We'd always appreciate it if you subscribe to MinMax's YouTube channel for more interviews like this. And just so you know, you can unlock the podcast version of this interview, all of our other interviews, The Deepest Dives, which are our huge community game clubs, and a bunch of other benefits if you go over to patreon.com slash minmax with two ends. And if you support us at any tier, you get access to the community Discord at minmax, which is where we hold Trivia Tower, which is our monthly gigantic video game trivia competition for the community. And this month is Trivia Tower, the grand round, as we're calling it. So if you answer video game trivia correctly, you work your way up the Trivia Tower. If you are the last person standing, you win $1,000 as a big thank you to the community. So if you know a lot about video games, put it to the test, and you support independent games media at the same time. All right, but without further ado, Here's Vinny, Alex, and Brad. Vinny, Alex, Brad, welcome to MinMax, guys. Thank you. Great to be here. Great. I've Thanks always, for I've having so, us. I've always been so curious about Minneapolis. It's great to be here. <laughs> Isn't it nice? You know, it has its ups and downs, but this is the time to be here, man. Uh, uh, what's the weather like? Uh, I, I mean, obviously, we're all there right now with right. you, but um, if you were to describe the weather, what would it be like? Yeah, it's a, it's kind of like 15 degrees, uh, just a cold snow. Uh, no, it's it's been 90 for the last three weeks somehow. We're somehow in a Ugh. drought. In the land of lakes, it's a drought. But that's not important. We don't need to talk about the weather. We have more important things to talk about. Uh, Next Lander. Have you oh. guys, have you hit the spot yet? We we're used to saying the name. Um... I've I've managed to stop myself from saying the previous place that I worked, but every once in a while, neck slander does come out of my mouth, which yeah. is, uh, you know, maybe not the intended uh, pronunciation. Do you all have a, a big Google Doc somewhere of names that you were trying out there? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. oh, oh it's, man. It's, it's funny you say that. Uh, we we kind of just ran down that list uh, on one of our, our patron audio episodes of the I'll tell you what. Uh, I don't know how quickly you got to MinMax, yeah. but um, the naming part was uh, incredibly hard, mm -hmm. very difficult, and maybe some of the most taxing stuff. Like we were just sitting there for hours and days uh, running through uh, uh, names. I think it was like eight days. I think we spent like two, three days on like a content plan and a business plan. And then it was like, all right, let's come up for a name for this thing. And then like scene missing a week and a half later. What happened? <laughs> yeah, it is brutal. You just become numb to it. And so, yeah, with yeah. MinMax, it was a bunch of different names. Like, okay, what do we want to convey? And I mean, now I look back on it and it's just so obvious because I remember it was like, okay, we want to convey, uh, you know, a light Minnesota angle. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And then also something about just getting better, progressing. How can we tie these things together? And so I remember like the runner up name was like Super Heartland. And people oh, were like, what? Okay. What? that sounds like a truck right. commercial. Like, I don't know what that is. And another one was like Sunset Writers. It was, right, it was writers. That, it, writers. It is yeah, truly okay. horrific stuff. And now it's like, okay, <laughs> thank God we filmed in Max. It was taken on a couple of social channels, but F it, lock that down. We got to go. <laughs> So it was taken even with the two ends? Yeah, but it's that weird thing. Okay. Maybe you guys can help me. Maybe you're smarter than me on this front. But it's taken with two ends on like Twitter and YouTube. But it's one of those like YouTube channels with like two subscribers and they uploaded <laughs> something in 2008. It's like a shaky cam at night and that's about it. And I don't know. <laughs> it's my channel. I know. I'm so sorry. I don't know what to do about it. Is it possible <laughs> to ask them to be like, hey, can we just have that? So that's funny. Like we, we, when we were going through the 875 names, we definitely came across a couple of things like that. And my, my, like we've talked to other people and they were like, you know, hey, you can, you can do something about that. And like all mm -hmm. of us felt like, well, no, we're, no, we're not going to do anything. What are we going to do? We're going to go like, like muscle our way in and be like, <laughs> Hey, person who didn't, hasn't posted since 2008. Like we have, we have a better claim to the, uh, uh, Meister sword than you do. Like, no, it's, you know, like, <laughs> Uh, sure is would, a nice username you got there. Would be a shame <laughs> if someone usurped it from you. Right. Go yeah. ahead and delete those videos of you with your child. Uh, we're gonna need this yeah. space, buddy. Yeah, it's rough. Yeah, so it was. It was. Um, that was. It was hard. That was hard. And and it gets harder. I think every minute that passes because more people are taking names and more services are coming out, and mm -hmm. you have to check more things. Yeah. Uh, so what was the launch like for y'all? Were you on like a 
I don't know, a big Discord call where you're just texting each other, like, walk me through your level of communication as you hit go on this sucker. Oh, it's so hard to call that day to mind now. <laughs> it was only a week <laughs> yeah, and a half. It's kind of a blur. <laughs> like, I, man, um, I think we I think we spent a good portion of that day in a Discord call, right? Kind yeah, of, we were in a Discord uh, call, stuff. and we were also messaging back and forth with one another. Trying to make sure, you know, the Discord work, people were getting in okay, like, keeping up with what people were saying. We, we streamed that day, so we decided, like, hey, let's just do everything today. So we had a stream to plan and implement as well. So we were coming in super hot, too. We we were trying to make sure well, it didn't leak out, right? Like, we we wanted to control, like, hey, we want to we want to launch. We want to have a launch. We want this to be exciting. Like, yeah. we're excited. We want everybody to launch. So that meant we couldn't tell a lot of people because, you know, we love our friends dearly. Uh, but you know, you tell one person, that person tells another two people and they say, don't tell anybody. Yeah. And like, we assumed that everybody knew by that point, but, but also it meant we couldn't publish anything or put our information on stuff because people right. are smart and they search the internet. So Alex was filling in bios like 20 minutes mm -hmm. before launching oh. on like Twitter and stuff like that. Cause we didn't want any, we had the accounts locked, but we didn't want anything there. We had launched episode. We had uploaded episode zero of the podcast, but then it became searchable on the iTunes store with all our metadata and our names on it. And we're like, oh my gosh, it's up so early, but we heard there's like 48 hour to a, totally, it yeah. could go up anywhere from yeah. five minutes to a week of lead time. Yeah, so, like the, con <laughs> the conventional wisdom was that iTunes takes days, but after you upload yeah. your first podcast, to actually start listing it. And so we did it on, I think Thursday evening, I want to say. Yeah, like bright and early Friday morning, the next morning yeah. it was up and viewable and just ready to go. I was like, whoa. Oh, that's whoa. terrifying. Yeah. So then we, uh, so then I was like, okay, what are we going to do? And we were like, okay, we can, we can suspend that iTunes account and then reactivate it. But we don't know if that has to get approved again manually. Oh my God. Or the, the Apple podcast thing. And so we wound up just taking it down. We we're all super nervous because it says like, you know, next lander podcast removed. And we're like, oh my gosh, well, let's just wait until Monday morning. And then Monday morning hits and we went to go publish it again. And like, it's not showing up. And now I'm in a, I, I freak out very easily about that stuff. And like, I'm like, Hey guys, it's not showing up. It's I did this like 30 seconds ago and it's not showing up. And they're like, all right, relax, give it some time. And like it's been, it's been 35 seconds. It's not showing up. And then uh, it's what wound up having us have two podcasts in that feed, two episode zeros, because I wound up just publishing it again, pushing it through. That pushed it through on the uh, uh, podcast store, Apple uh, podcast store. Okay. Anyway, it was a tizzy. And then uh, when we went live, the overwhelming support. It's hard to it's hard to remember. It's only been a week. Yeah, it's been it's been really wild. And I don't know. It, this is a, a video version of this podcast. Yeah. Yeah, this is like this has been my the the, the all the post-its that I have ripped off my monitor in the last week as my to-do list of stuff of oh okay now we need to hook up uh, a bank account now we need to do this stuff like okay we need to we need to contact this person now we need to move forward with this it, some things are sequential some things are parallel uh, and we're kind of getting towards the end of some of the sequential stuff, which has been the hard part. Yeah. Was it just one big moment of holy f this thing is skyrocketing or were there tears and, and layers of, oh, we're doing well. Oh, we're doing more than well. Sweet Jesus. I mean, what's more than that? I mean, there were tears, but uh, you know, <laughs> not maybe not those kind of tears. Like it was, I don't, it was just very like just gobsmacking like you know i i think we had i think we are all conditioned to kind of have like not low expectations but moderate expectations you know try and keep things reasonable try and expect like okay you know maybe we'll get a few thousand people supporting us we can build off that we can get going and just to have the response we got right out of the gate was bonkers and amazing you know it's very we talked about this a lot when we were um at part of bigger companies it's it's a bit of a bubble and you're not sure what the actual response is going to be from every, everything. I mean, we were, we were all in there for a decade, right? Like inside yeah. kind of a, a, a kind of a, a, a bubble for lack of a better word. And you know, you have, you don't know what your self worth is. You don't know, you know, there are a lot of people, you get messages and stuff. You also get a lot of criticism, obviously. And you, it's, you know, you're, you're, your kind of futures are dictated by other people and you know, you kind of go back and forth and you're like, well, maybe, maybe I'm not worth that much here, you know, based on, you know, um, you know, you, I don't want to get too much into corporate stuff, but like sure. you, you get, we've been there a long time. You get anchored into things, right? Like you are like, Oh, okay. You started 12 years ago at this level and this salary and now everything 
your whole career will, will be relative to that, right? So even if you have gotten bigger and things have grown, you're still relative to where you started because it's always a percentage of growth. It's never just like, oh, okay, you, you leapfrog here. So, you know, we're always like, I don't know what we're, we're still, we're still a bunch of 20 year olds doing a thing and everything is relative to that. Uh, and but so when we left, it was really, really amazing. But you're smart 20 year olds in your minds, right? I mean, can't you just look out there no. and say, oh, I'm sorry, but can't you just see like, you know, kind of funny or even like us, I mean, we have a fraction of the giant bomb audience that either like, okay, if you scale that, no. I think that would mean that we could conquer Patreon. No, I think we were all, I, I, I think I speak for all of us where we were like, okay, what, like, what are we going to do? We're, we're probably going to wind up getting day jobs or something. And this will be another thing to do. Like, yeah. This will be a, a thing on the side. We, I mean, we, we hope that maybe we can continue doing this, but you know, we're, we're also very practical. It's, you know, people, uh, and I think, I think we know that people are, are, you know, in different financial situations and in different places in their lives. And, you know, the, the generous support we have gotten and the outpouring of, um, was kind of beyond what we could have imagined at, at that point. And it really is. And, you know, we, we expect that there are a lot of people that will support us. Uh, and have given us a, a ton of support up front, uh, but maybe can't maintain that level of financial support. And so, you know, we're also trying to be very smart. And that's probably where our, some of our experience in the roller coaster of this stuff comes from is, hey, let's not be rash and, you know, let's give it a, some time to level out. Right. I, I assume you guys agree with that. We've yeah, I think uh, where, where we're at at month two, month three, month six, I think is right. going to be much more important just because, yeah, that, that stuff is so mercurial. Can't make any decisions right off the bat. I, I had a very high level of confidence right up until the theoretical became real, you know, like mm -hmm. before, before we left, you know, like, you know, we had insight into what the business did there and like what, fraction of that we might be able to capture you know but the second that your livelihood depends on it it's very easy to catastrophize and just assume like well this thing's going to be an abject failure like what have we done this yeah. is, this is you know what i mean so it, for sure no way to just no way to know what was going to happen until it happened do you feel like you've gotten out of that mindset now or are you still catastrophizing in your mind it's a different no it is just a different style of <laughs> yeah, catastrophe that's right yeah now now it is an enormous sense of responsibility and the desire to not let people down uh, and, and to do right by the, the very generous support that they've shown us. So yeah, it's, there's, always, it, there's always, there's always something to panic about. Yeah. It's such a weird feeling. And I remember launching MinMax and just thinking like, there has to be a catch and you know, full transparency. I talked to you guys, what was that earlier this week, a little bit as well, just to try and share any tips or anything. And I, I feel like you all are bracing for a catch because it almost feels mm -hmm. too good to be true. And that's, you know, a big lesson is there's not a catch. Like this can be so much more efficient than a lot of companies out there are making it when it comes to media creation, especially in this space, like there's really, it can be remarkable. It's an epiphany of efficiency in a certain way. It's just like, oh yeah, that's right. It's just us and the audience. Why can't this be a direct connection? It's perfect. That was absolutely I don't know, ben. one of the goals. I don't know, man. I, that sounds like something a catch would say to try and sell it <laughs> That's right. That's right. This is the, now, you're, now you're selling me. I'm in on this scheme. Um, like one of the one of the catches I feel like is out there is that there's still some nebulous overseer above us, like glowering over what we're doing and second guessing all of our decisions, you know, like being just being in a corporate machine for that long, which is no, nothing but hierarchy. You know, there are eight levels of management above you and like. I still feel like there's somebody upstairs and I'm going like every time we talk about business stuff, I'm like, are we allowed to talk about this? Can, is this okay? <laughs> and it doesn't matter yeah. because there's nobody here to tell us if it's okay or not except ourselves, but just have not wrapped my head around that model yet. Yeah, we, we, we were in the, we were in that machine for a long time. I mean, when we started very early on with whiskey, it was obviously pretty scrappy, very small, very, um, very transparent. Like, you know, we were in the room with the people uh, making business decisions and, and all of that stuff. And then, you know, we not too long after that joined CBS, which is a giant company, right. And just yeah. kind of got absorbed into that thing. And, you know, I think all of us, we're, uh, some people really love a corporate environment. Like we, we did not go to whiskey because we love the corporate environment. Like mm -hmm. we, we kind of removed ourselves from some of that because we saw, you know, the struggles there or the kind of layers there. And we're like, oh, this is more attractive, this smaller thing. And, you know, I, I personally, I just, I don't think I, I've never been good at navigating a corporate world. Like I 
like working with people. I like doing the work. I, I don't like the kind of, I, I don't want to make this sound too dark, but I don't like the kind of gaming the corporate world way, you know, mm-hmm. corporate world is very rarely a meritocracy. It, it is a kind of a, about, you know, who do you know? Did you do the right thing? Did you, you know, I mean, you were part of a big company. Like the, the, those things are, sometimes you see people who work very hard and they're like, yes, you are amazing at your job and you will stay there because you are amazing at your job. Right. And, and yes. we right. can't afford to move you out of that position. So we're, we'll put 800 people above you and be like, well, what about me? I'm not also saying the, for me personally. I'm just saying, also, you know, it happens. In, in some cases, the people making the decisions at the top have no idea what you even do because you're too yes. busy doing it all the time and not yeah. out there promoting yourself or, or visible. So, so, you know, after a decade plus, um, you know, in, in that environment, you know, this, this was the fourth time the company had been kind of moved around or if you count, you know, from, from whiskey to CBS, to Viacom CBS to red ventures. Um, I, for me, uh, like when I gave my notice, it was like, okay, it's been, it's been a long time in this atmosphere. I think, you know, giant bomb's going to need another shakeup, another, another rebuilding. Um, which in in some sense is very exciting, but for me, I think it was like I think I think this is probably my off ramp to to kind of investigate other things, and and that that was interesting in terms of then <laughs> kind of hearing from Brad and then hearing from Alex and be like, oh, I guess you guys are also in this kind of similar headspace of yeah maybe you know it's it's time to rebuild, but they need fresh energy there. And like, I don't know if I am the, I am the energy that it needs right now for, for that. And I I was, I was a little just, you know, it had been a while of talking to people there of like, what is next? Like what is next in my career? What is next? You know, there's, you could probably ask anybody inside there when you do the interviews for the people that are inside there, (laughs) it, it should, it should come up no surprise of like. You know, we, we talked openly about this stuff, about um, kind of like direction and career and, and all of that stuff. And it, it can be, things can move slowly inside a big company, very slowly. Yeah. Do you feel like you'll ever go into more detail about exactly what happened with your departure? Or is this going to be creative or business differences and time to see my way out? For me personally, like, there aren't any really big secrets. Yeah. Like, there are, um, it's... I mean, it's a decade plus of, of working uh, at a place and, and kind of building a thing, being extremely excited, building it, then building Giant Bomb East uh, with Alex and, and building that thing. And I kind of always liked the small building process, right? Build Giant Bomb, the small thing. Awesome. It's very exciting. Um, set the foundation in place and, and, and do it. And then building Giant Bomb East, build this thing. Let's go. And then, um, you know, is it successful or is it not? I mean, that's debatable. I really enjoyed Giant Bomb Peace. I thought it was great. Uh, and then, you know, what's what's the next thing? Um, and then, you know, I had I had some differences with with where I thought, you know, resources should go or that. Mm-hmm. But you know, it wasn't like a big deal. It's just, hey, this is what I think the resources should go, uh, and this is where they do. And it's like, okay, like we might be on a, on a different path here, but I I don't think either of them are wrong. It just might not be the best fit. For those things, like here are the th- here's my list of things I think we should fix, right? And yeah. here's their list of things they think they should fix, right? And you know, what is the right path? That's very personal choice. And 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 after 10 years, I have a perspective of of the things that I think work. And as a company that has its own goals, they have a perspective of things that they think work. Uh, but you know, it's 10 years at a 10 plus years at a place, it's a long time. It's a long time. I, I, I wasn't putting, my, I wasn't getting a pension. You know, it wasn't like I was getting to, to like, you know, it wasn't putting money in and then be like, well, if I just get 30 years on, then uh, I get 80% of my top three years. It's like, you know, it's, it's 10 years at this place. It was another rebuilding it, and a kind of natural point to say, to rethink and, and also to rethink last two years have been weird, you know, yeah. just yeah. in the world. For sure. Yeah. And there, there was a moment, you know, for me where it was just kind of like, you know, I'm not a superstitious person by nature, but sometimes, you know, you hit a certain moment or you hit a certain event and it just kind of feels like, oh, this is a branching point. This right. is a moment where it's like something is going to change. And it wasn't necessarily like, obviously, you know, Vinny making the decision that, you know, he wanted to leave and 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 Brad making that decision as well certainly gave me, you know, the <laughs> nudge. But I think yeah. for me, the moment when I kind of hit that that branching point and that thinking point was 
you know, a, a, a couple months before we made the announcement, we just went into that studio and packed it all up. You know, we went yeah. in there and, you know, all the stuff that we had, you know, Vinny had built in that studio and put together, you know, around 2015, just threw it all into boxes and put it into cold storage because there wasn't necessarily, you know, a plan in place for when there would be a new studio out here. There wasn't, and you know, it's not that Red Ventures was necessarily like icing that whole project or anything, but it felt like we there was there was a wide open road in front and no idea what it was actually going to be. And I think for me at that moment, I was just like, I should probably start thinking about what I actually want here. Yeah, what I what I want, what I want to do, where I want to go, and that wasn't necessarily guaranteed to be oh, well, let's get these guys together and let's start a new thing. Like the, when I made the decision to leave, it was very much like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I, you know, I, maybe I want to stay in the video game industry somewhere. Maybe it's not public facing. Maybe I want to get out of this entirely. I had no idea. And, you know, we came together once we had kind of made the individual decisions and we started talking. And I think we realized that it wasn't necessarily that we never wanted to do this kind of work again. And especially not necessarily that we didn't want to do this kind of work again with each other. It's just that we needed a change and we needed a different situation and we needed to see what it would be like to do this on our own. Yeah. So what were the discussions then? Did you have kind of an early mission statement or like, okay, if we were to do this hypothetical Patreon, we all need to agree on the following pillars. Like what were those things mm -hmm. that you set up early that there was kind of the, the overall goal here? It was a lot of uh, philosophical stuff of like, all right, what are we here to do? Are we covering games? Are we covering other stuff? How are we covering those things? You know, nuts and bolts content plan stuff of like, all right, we're starting with a podcast, right? Like, that's what people like from us, right? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, should be a that's podcast. what we've been doing for like a dozen years. <laughs> but then, you know, there are a million questions around even that of like, okay, how long should this podcast be? What should the format be? Should it be the same format every week? Should it evolve? Um what day of the week should it go up? What time of day? Who's hosting it? Right. Like who should, who should host it? Should there be a host or should it be the more modern thing of like everybody is kind of a host and just sort of all moves it along, even though Vinny kind of brings it in mm -hmm. with, with, with his natural energy. Uh, of course. I, I, but, I like, I like talking. Uh, I like, uh, <laughs> you're a director at heart. Yes, I get I'm it. Happy, yeah. I'm happy to let you do the boisterous <laughs> intro part. Um, yeah, it was just a huge bulleted list in a Google Doc, right? Of like, all right, what are the things we need here? How do we, what kind of video are we doing? Is it all live? You know, do people need videos of new video games anymore? Or is that like, is the market so flooded with that that we should be doing something else? You know, there are a million decisions yeah, around I, a, pl I, I, a plan like that. And, and I think some of the, even the even the uh, 20,000 foot view stuff of, of this thing, and we, we weren't sure kind of the scale or scope of it, even when, we, when we're starting clearly, but um, it was like, hey, if we're going to do this thing, we're doing this thing together, all three of us. And w the three of us are going to represent the uh, the founding of it, right? Like we want to make sure that, um, you know, people are compensated for their work. People are, are, are valued for their time um, and make sure we kind of get away from some of the things that we felt were rubbing us the wrong way inside big companies where, uh, like I kind of, I said, like you, you, sometimes it's not necessarily the what you do's it's the like who knows you're doing it kind of thing mm -hmm. do you know what i mean right like, yeah, percep perception is reality inside yeah water. yeah yeah of like you know you know anybody who's worked in a company knows that like uh it does if you show up early and somebody sees you there early it doesn't matter what you're doing it just looks like you're working hard right and it's right. just like okay well you know that's that's not necessarily always the truth or the loudest person in the meeting isn't always the one who uh, has the best ideas and like those are things that we wanted to make sure we played to our strengths and we, we valued each other and we were communicating and like a lot of, a lot of core values that we, um, we kind of took away from our time together of, 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 you know, we respect each other and, and we want to listen and want to have equal say in a lot of this stuff. And I think a big thing was, um, no matter what the size was, um, really trying to be as efficient with, uh, uh, the support and money that comes in as possible and, and trying to make sure that, um, not only are people making livable wages and, and, and there, but the money that comes in, um, is not, <laughs> is used, is used in a smart way, an efficient way. Right. It's not Vinny's jet ski fund. 
I mean, it could be. Okay. I mean, that's, that's, I mean, listen, that's, listen, everybody's got their things, right? It's a, if that jet ski transforms into a robot, then that is, uh, that is right in my wheelhouse. And I, I consider that fair game. Yep. And then that's content, uh, baby. Yeah. It's all right there. Yeah. I mean, I've only got four of them. So <laughs> <laughs> it's a fascinating transition to think of, you know, being exhausted from doing, you know, 10 years of this type of thing. And then, okay, how much of an energy burst can we get from splitting out on our own? I, I mean, did you have discussions about that? Like, are we ready to run up this mountain for the third time effectively in our career? Oh, yeah, we did. Like, it yeah. was, I, you know, we're like, it, like you said, we've been in this industry a very, very long time. You know, like all of us have been working in this business, you know, like Vinny, I think you said you started in, in video games in 2006, right? Mm hmm. And then like Brad and I, you know, got our start in the early aughts and we've been around for a long time. And the idea of rebuild, rebuilding a thing certainly, you know, comes with its encumbrances and it's, you know, it's exhaustion. But like, I think that is really the spark that got us going is the idea that like we can build another thing. We can kind of get back to the roots of what we've always wanted to do with this stuff and we can do it on our own terms. All, all that said, I, I, I so gravely underestimated how much actual work there was to do with this stuff. And like, mm -hmm. we're working our way through it. We're getting there day by day. The gigantic to-do list is slowly being whittled down. But, like, what I mean is, like, you know, YouTube, Twitch, Twitch, like, there are so much, there are so many turnkey platforms out there. There's so much automation around those things. We were, I, you know, in my mind, it was like, oh, we'll plug some account settings in here and there. <laughs> It'll all connect up. Like, I'm sure we'll get it all automated in a day or two. You know what I mean? Yeah. It is. There is there is so much more to learn around these platforms and around how to distribute content in 2021 on those things than I think we bargained for. Um, you know, we're, we're sitting there day by day. We're learning like, okay, what does it mean to raid somebody on Twitch? <laughs> Should we be yeah. doing hype trains? Probably not. Some people hate hype trains. I don't know if we should be I hype about them. I don't yeah. know. Like we're, we're we're trying to we're trying to hew close to what our original goal and vision was when, when we kind of set out, um, which is to make sure that whatever we do is sustainable, it is tenable, yep. and, and it and it and it can go on without burnout. Uh, um, and I think uh, also in, in having some variety in it, so we so we don't. I think coming from what we were doing and doing now, interesting. You know, we're we're obviously kind of doing a lot of what we know. Uh, so if it seems similar to our old stuff, it's because that's what we were doing, right? That's uh, we're doing what we know, uh, and it is it is while we get everything in place, the building block blocks in place, you know, we're we're kind of doing what we know how to do. And if it's and if it seems similar, it's because we built that other stuff, right? <laughs> like it's right, like that's what right, we were doing, right. right? It's like hey, we our my house looks like the other house, yes, because this is we built that other house there too. You know, it's like that's what that's what we're doing, and I think there I think both things are going to change over time. And I'm actually very excited to see that difference. Like I'm excited to see where giant bomb is going mm. because I think, I think, uh, what, one of the things that, um, uh, one of the, you know, in my, in my leaving, I had like, Oh, okay. It was a very hard decision as you might, as you might guess it's, we, you know, we spent a lot of time there. We built this thing. It's a very tough decision. You know, um, you know, I had a good salary there. I had health insurance. I have a family like, you know, that's hard to walk away from. But, uh, in the end it was something I thought I had to do, you know, at that point. Um, and one of the things I wanted to do was w work more with Jeff Packler. I, I, I'm really mm. interested to see what he does there. Um, he, he's a very smart guy. He is one of the most charismatic people I've ever known. Uh, and so like, I, I'm curious to see where, where he, he's taking some of that stuff and, and, um, moving things along there. So I, I think, you know, when we talk about what we want, it's different. It, it, I think the goals are different and I'm not, I can't speak for their business plans or what their actual plans are. Cause we, we were out of there and it's not, I don't think it would be uh, appropriate to talk about what they're going to do. But for us, our, our vision is I think <laughs> on a smaller scale, <laughs> I think we are, we are trying to keep things kind of tight. Um, intimate, I think is a, is a kind of a, a better word. Like we, yeah. we want to kind of tight knit community kind of intimate, like play the stuff we want to play. Um, and, and we'll, I think we'll see those, kind of as things grow and uh, we get our own um, kind of more of our own identity, I, I think we'll, we'll see a bigger difference. Yeah, as, as, as far as charting that course goes, I mean, yeah, we're going to have to figure it out as we go along. And I don't think most people like inspiration doesn't strike like a lightning bolt, right? Like it emerges over time as you figure stuff out, as you try things. And yeah, if you go back and look at Giant Bomb in 2008 when we started there, you know, we all came out of GameSpot and the first year and a half, two years of Giant Bomb were us. I mean, Vinny was doing video stuff, but like, the rest of us were writing game reviews and writing <laughs> news posts on a blog, like nonstop, like we were trying to be Kotaku and Joystick, you know, like right. we were not, 
Like we didn't go in there thinking, all right, we're going to put up 10 hours of video a week and we're going to be live streaming before live streaming platforms exist. You know, it was like, we know how to write game reviews, I guess. So let's keep reviewing games. You know, like it took a long time to go through that creative process and like get to where that thing actually ended up, you know? Yeah. So it's kind of pruned back down, but the tree is going to grow in a new direction overall for next <laughs> exactly. time. That's, that's the analogy here. That's a good metaphor. Yeah. 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 Like yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you think it's going to surprise people? Do you think you're going to have big moments of the community being like, what is this? Or if people hmm. understand you, which I'd argue listening to thousands of hours of all you, like we got a pretty good idea of what your tastes are. I mean, Man, that's a tough I question. hope we do at some yeah. point. You know, I hope that we are able to deliver some things that people don't just expect from us necessarily. But, you know, I also th I think, like you said, when we have as many years of, uh, you know, built up, you know, experience with us, you know, listening to us, knowing what we like, what we play, what we do. I think that, you know, there's a fairly easy rhythm that people have sort of been able to fall in with our early content. But yeah, I mean, down the road, you know, we want to try some stuff. We want to throw some things at the wall that we've never tried throwing before and see if they stick. And, you know, I I, I hope that stuff turns out great. I hope people love it. I, you know, there was, a, there was a thing, I don't remember if it's a study or, or just an anecdote of... Um that related to people's commutes, right? And there was this thing where people, you know, you take the same train every day for years and years and years, right? And then uh, whether it's due to a pandemic or something, suddenly that mode of transportation can't take that and you have to find an alternate route. And a large percentage of people are like, oh, this is actually more efficient. This is a better way to do this. Right, right. So we, in a lot of ways, we're forced to take a different route now, which is going to lead us to different destinations. Uh, not only, It's not going to get us back to the same place. It's going to lead us to either more efficient ways or different ways of doing things. And that that's pretty exciting to me. There are... Um, there are a lot of new challenges we have, and that's exciting. Like we, uh, um, there are challenges for sure. There are challenges at both jobs, but these are just different challenges now. And solving challenges is is the quickest way to have something new pop up, right? <laughs> the, the the struggle and the compromises you make. Some some of our best stuff always comes from like, well, we can't do what we want. Let's do what's do, but let's try and make it into something we have fun doing. And uh, th the biggest thing is. We're all very excited. Like we're all extremely excited. Um, you know, uh, there was a, a bit of a, a routine, a bit of a kind of, um, you know, uh, for me, there was, you know, I, I remember my, there was a, this moment where my kids told my wife, like, uh, like, I, I don't remember when dad was happy. <laughs> it was like, and it's like, oh man, like I, I got to do something. I got, I got to snap out of this. And like, my family now is like dead psyched. Like he's, he's excited all the time. Um, and that to me, uh, hopefully that comes through and everything. And, and it's really about, uh, doing the stuff we want to do and building a new thing. And some of it's going to be a very similar because we were doing a lot of the stuff we wanted to do and we're, we're bringing that over here. And a lot of it's going to be different because I think that is, uh, uh, there's new opportunity to expand and try different things, longer formats, sometimes a break, you get locked into into tradition at places sometimes, right? Right. And it's like, right. oh, you can't you can't do that because you've never done that before, or that's not the format, or you can't do this. Uh, and having a clean start means we can kind of make new traditions and we can make new new ways of doing things, and and that's exciting as well. Yeah, that's, that's been another that's another one of those things that's been very hard to figure out and break out of. Like we we had planned to stream Ratchet and Clank on Tuesday this past Tuesday, uh, which came out the previous Friday, right? And then. At some point, I was like, do we need to stream that? Like, a week's worth of video of Ratchet & Clank is already on the internet at this point. Do people really need to see us play it live? Right. Is that actually valuable to people? But, like, breaking out... I mean, this is a GameSpot mentality. This is not even Giant Bomb. This goes back pushing 20 years now of, mm -hmm. like, the idea of not producing sort of marquee video coverage around one of the biggest PS5 releases of the year was like, wow, like... Cognitive dissonance in the extreme, right? Oh, like, absolutely. Like, what are we doing? And the crazy it's thing like, is, now that it's just a direct line of communication with the community, and right. you can just ask them, yeah, I mean, what do you want us to do? That, they that would probably a, see, uh, you know, a tour of Vinny's shelf behind them right, more than right, they'd rather right. see Ratchet and Clank content. And just to have that idea, even just like polls and getting that direct feedback of like, 
okay, it's just us. And you want this? Sure, we'll do it. Like, there's like that, just... That's quite literally like the immediate feedback of just going on the Discord and saying like, hey, do you guys really want to see us stream Ratchet tomorrow or do something else? And like almost unanimously people were like, hey, we, there's a lot of Ratchet stuff out there. Like a lot of us are already playing it. Like, yeah, you don't have you don't have to cover that if you don't want to. We want you to do what you want to do and are excited about. So Totally. Yeah, you just we, have to do so something. Yeah, yeah, just do something different than what other outlets are doing that, you know, the freedom can afford you. And this is maybe a minor example, but like at MinMax, we have what we call the deepest dive, which is this huge community community game club discussion where i mean we talked about final fantasy 7 remake for 14 hours i think in total and it's just that mm -hmm. amazing thing of like the community is so happy to see it like hey we're eager to like give a game like mass effect one the discussion it deserves like really break it down in a fun way and it's like yeah other big outlets they're not going to spend the resources and the hours that it would take to follow up on this game after it's already released and so just trying to differentiate yourself for you know take advantage of that freedom i think is a big thing yeah, I, I think I think uh, also there is something I said the word intimate before, and I'll, I'll say it again. There is something about us. There's something we were always worried about back at Giant Bomb was scale, right? You you start getting um, you, you kind of start getting sub factions within a bigger audience, right? You're like, oh, I'm I'm not here for this, right? I'm, I like I'm not here for this content, and the, like I'm not here for this person, right? And so I think coming back to a smaller scale is something that we kind of really enjoy it at this point is hey like it's just the three of us <laughs> like the if, you, if you're not here for the three of us then like you're probably in the wrong spot at that point um you know and like that's okay that's fine but you know it, it's like when you have as you as you expand and as you grow airtime gets eaten up by maybe it's not a thing the person wanted and like that person's unhappy or or you know and being able to kind of directly engage with the community at a certain scale, again, some of that stuff goes away as you as you grow, uh, um, is is important to us right now. And you know, it's kind of what we envisioned it. Kind of going back to your earlier question of what did we have in mind, and it was this kind of like, hey, bigger isn't always better, and maybe there's maybe there's a maybe there's a happy size here where we're happy, yeah. the audience is happy, and we can all just kind of. You know, as, as long as we may, are maintaining um, and uh, I was, you know, obviously it's a business and we need if we want to do this and, and put the time into it and, and get insurance for our families and stuff like that, we have to we have to make money. And um, I think it's really interesting to I'll just say this here. It's interesting to um, really be looking at expenses and books. And uh, I'm sure, Ben, you know this, too, of like. It, it carves down very quickly, right? Like it, you know, there, there are, there are expenses and taxes and a lot of things. Um, and that number really gets cut down very quickly. And so, you know, you have, that's why we're kind of being a bit cautious and maybe, uh, overly cautious right now in terms of like, let's see where we wind up. Let's, you mm -hmm. know, uh, you know, let's, you know, Hey, we'd love to get, you know, this person or this person or, or put this person on contract or bring this person. Let's, hold on a second before we risk other people's livelihoods on anything here. Um, and let's see where this, this, this winds up. Like we will take those risks because that's what we decided to do. But um, it's, it's interesting at this scale to be able to engage, hopefully make the stuff we want and have people come along with that. If they, if they, if they are, uh, um, if they want to. Yeah. And, and it's, been the, great, it's been great so far. You talk about, talk about catches. I think on the business side, I keep waiting for like uh, eight other shoes to drop. Yeah. You know, like I, I feel like, I'm sure you've got experience with this. I feel like we need to go through one or two kind of full tax and business cycles to see exactly what's coming before we can really make a lot of big decisions. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. what percentage of this is just going to be gone in three months for <laughs> estimated tax reasons and stuff like that, you know? Right. There are those like, fine I details. Like, I think you're going to yeah. be fine. I think you're going to keep growing. Yeah. And I think more of that audience is going to stick around than you're probably bracing for right now. It's probably going to dip a little bit and then it'll probably keep climbing, you know, realistically for the trajectory of this thing, if I had to predict it. The only way I that would, can happen is if we imagine the worst. That's what you have to do. <laughs> Otherwise, it yeah. won't happen. It's, it's, it's the same thing. I like, Listen, if, if, uh, if nobody comes back except my mom on the Patreon mm -hmm. next month, I will still have considered this an amazing success. And thank you for everybody who came out to support us. Like, really, it is the success in the kind of confidence validation of, of like my myself the self-validation of like like i said we i'm not joking when you said when you're inside it's very hard to know yeah who you who you are and what you're doing and you know I'm, I, I don't think it's malicious but there there can sometimes be a bit of a culture of like what are you gonna leave right who are you you know like 
what are you, you going to do on the outside? You're 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 nothing without this organization. And it's not it's not it's not that Disney villain esque kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But it is saying that out loud. But it's yeah. just your, yeah. it, that's just your inner monologue, right, Vinny? I mean, yeah. Or is it well, more than that? I listen, it, sometimes it's maybe not said out loud, but it sometimes maybe feels a little implied of like okay, objectively implied. It's, Okay. It's, just a, it's yeah. a corporate mentality that just suffuses the walls of every building. Um, and, and, you know, you know we, we 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 very rarely heard like, "Hey, nice job." You know, like it was it was one of those things where you know you, you're putting in the work. It's it's kind of a big machine, and like you sometimes you work very hard, and and then sometimes the feeling is like, "Okay, do it again next week. Do it again next week." And and then it's very rarely you know kind of like a knock on your door and be like, "Hey." Good job, you know, and it's and it's again, it's not malicious. It's just sure. You know, think, wheels are spinning, things are moving. Yeah, like it's, the machine is always moving, and not, not only that, but like that's also the consequence of being a, a relatively small fish in a very large pond. You know, yes, C- yeah, CBS yeah. is a massive century-old media company. Like Red Ventures is newer and somewhat smaller, but still a big company, right? Like we were, I think it's fair to say, maybe probably the smallest team in our unit. I guess. Pretty close um, to it. Maybe, maybe not these two. Pretty it. close like, to it, I would say. There, there, were, there were, you know, the people, the people overseeing us also had a lot of other larger businesses to also oversee. You know, they just, yeah. by, the nature, by the nature of the organization, they can't give 100% of their time to us being a relatively small thing, you know? Yeah. I'm imagining. And, and so, well, there's nobody here to say good job now. Like, <laughs> I, you know, I could say good job to Alex and Brad, and Brad could say it back to me. So, you know, but, it, but they're. But there's something that is just directly proportional now. Like it's like, hey, if, right. if we really mess this up, it's our fault. It's our right, fault, right. and it's nobody really to blame but us. Yeah, I mean, it's wild. I'm trying to think of like from the community's perspective. It's like, oh, so if somebody from corporate would have just said, "Good job," and your list of <laughs> here's things I want to do and here's things you want to do, if that would have uh-huh. aligned a little bit better, do you think you would have had the energy to stick around, or do you think no matter what, it was just time to go? I think that's an impossible hypothetical. Sure. Because, yeah. Because, um, because who knows, right? Like, oh, if uh, you know, this this is the this is the first title change I've had in ten years, right? Yeah. Like now, uh, so like you know, like I said, it's it's been a long time. I had cost of living increases. That's fine, you know, like o- over the decade. But you know, I was making a good salary, and I, I was a, a very comfortable salary, and and the benefits were okay. But it's you know, listen, I'm in my forties. Like I've I've got time to go before I retire here. Yeah. When I looked when I looked down the path and said, okay, what is my ten year plan here? You know, am I going to be in my fifties? You know, kind of uh, grinding away over here, or or what's you know, a, a, and it winnows at the top, right? In a corporation, it, it you know, yeah. fewer people can get that next position, right? So it's like okay, it winnows and winnows and winnows. And I don't, I wasn't sure what my next move was. Like, what, what is my next move? And a lot of times, and again, I'm not trying to blast companies here, yeah. uh, but, but everybody kind of knows, like, you don't get raises and promotions without changes in, in duties, right? Without kind of taking on a different responsibility, even if you're killing it. And it's like, okay, you're killing it. And it's like, well, you want that next step. What do you, what's your next, what's the ask and what's the thing? That's how, that's how a lot of companies work. Uh, And there, there just wasn't that much more, right? Like I could have taken on a ton more um, reports or, or done that, but then I wouldn't have time to do the stuff that I was, I would never host the thing ever again. I would never make a video ever again. I would never lay hands on a keyboard ever again. I take, you know, managing very seriously and people's careers very seriously. And that takes a lot of time. So it's just a structure thing, right? So, um, when if you when you say like well if this checkbox were checked and this checkbox were checked, like I I probably would have just disappeared anyway behind the scenes like that's what probably would have happened right like it, I would I I would have been not doing this I would have been behind the scenes doing something and you probably would see me pop up once or twice a year as with a clipboard in my hand and maybe a headset <laughs> on or something and like it looks so lame I would have looked very cool oh okay, uh, but okay. I, but I certainly, I certainly don't think I would have been doing uh, anything similar over the course of time to what people had come to uh, expect from me. Like, you know, yeah. I, I still really like production and I probably would have just gone much closer to that end of things. And, and that was actually, to be completely transparent, uh, before uh, we kind of uh, left the offices for the pandemic stuff was where I was trying to work with people to see, okay, hey, well, like, what other roles are there within the bigger company here? And, you know, where I was looking were, were bigger behind the scenes production roles uh, b- behind uh, at CBS at large and, and that kind of stuff. So 
I don't know what what is that check. I don't know what those check boxes could have been. Right, um, right. I mean, I know. think uh, honestly, I think the most revealing thing you've said about this entire saga so far is that quote from your kid. I mean, I think that that says a yeah. ton that I didn't know before. Yeah, it, it was really, you know, and, you know, I'm not going to say I was just dragging my feet and moping the whole time, but it was one of those things where it was a lot of, it, it was just a kind of, I don't know what the right word, like a malaise, you know, like you're just yeah. like, hey, 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 a little directionless, a little like, okay, I, I think I see what the next steps are. Do I align with this? What totally. is my role going to be here? What's going on here? And like, again, it's a long time to be having those discussions for, for a decade plus and shifting ground under your feet. Like Mm -hmm. things change every, you build a thing, something shifts, somebody different owns it. You have to kind of explain your position again. And you know, are you being represented fairly? Do you think you're being represented fairly? Is the work you're doing, you think being represented fairly who's representing you? Cause you have to have an advocate because things go up a chain. Um, you know, and, and I'm sure Alex and and Brad, you kind of feel similar ways, right? Of like, you know, three rungs up. Does anybody even know my name? Does anybody know right. that like, you know, uh, Brad just pulled, you know, 27 hours straight to go get this thing done, or yeah. you know, like, you know, they don't know. Yeah, sometimes even yeah. one rung up. I mean, yeah, I I definitely I know the feeling. Um, right, like 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 who who here knows that me and Vinny were up until like what 10 at night testing network solutions for remote video stuff on Monday night to make this video feature happen like nobody because we didn't really talk about it. Right. Yeah. That doesn't mean mean the work is not being done and that the hours are not kind of taking their toll on your personal life and stuff like that. Yeah. And and one other thing I'll just say to that is um, we, we brought a lot of those 10 years with us uh, and, and the industry was very, and the model was very different 10 years ago when we 10 plus years ago when we started that. And one of the things, you know, we kept saying internally is like, we, there needs to be a 2021 version of this. Like this, the, the model we have is from 10 years ago and it's not the model anymore. And it, and you know, from talking to some folks and again, it's not my place to talk about what's going on there. It seems like a lot of smart moves are, are being taken there to, to kind of bring that up to speed. Yeah. Alex, have you watched any giant bomb stuff since you left or is it still a little raw and sensitive? You know, I like I'll just for me personally and not speaking for the other guys like I I don't really have any of those feelings like I have poked in on some of the live streams they've done and, you know, some of the content they've been putting up here and there. Like the only reason I haven't been going more, honestly, is just because I've been so head down on this stuff, like just getting this thing launched, getting, you know, the streams going and the podcast going and all that stuff. Um, but no, like it, it, it's not a sore spot really at all. Like, you know, I'm the one who made the decision to leave and, you know, I don't harbor any real feelings about it other than, you know, I, there's that anxiety certainly that comes from making that kind of leap, a leap that I will say for my part, I have not made in a very long time. You right. know, like I, 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 there was a period of my life where I was jumping around jobs a little more often, but you know, I spent a decade just doing giant bomb stuff and you know it was seven of those years i think working giant bomb east with Vinny, and you get into a very comfortable groove no matter how you know problematic things sometimes can be like i was very comfortable there and i was very cool there but things shifted things changed you know the pandemic happened and the way we had to rethink ourselves and the way we had to rethink our content during that time I think in a way kind of gave me the push that I needed to feel like, oh, I can pivot. Like I can do something different than just the exact treadmill that I've been on for, you know, the last several years. Like I can, there are, there are other ways to do this. There are other ways, you know, to be present in this industry and there, like I can open myself up to some possibilities that weren't there before. And you know, I, I like so. Like I said, I, it's not really an issue or a sore spot for me. I don't like I have zero issue with Giant Bomb at this yeah. point. I'm just you know right now I've got to keep my focus on this because I haven't had to focus on something like this for a very long time. <laughs> yeah, it's exciting. Like Brad, do you have a? Are you surprised by the emotions after the launch? Do you have any surprising emotions about mm. the whole thing that you didn't expect? Yeah, the sheer terror. I think sheer terror. Big one. <laughs> yeah, I did not expect which I'm just very slowly starting to get over. I mean, I think the last couple of days have been the first days that felt like just straight up work days. Yeah. If that makes sense. Like, okay, this just started starting to feel kind of like the job we did before in terms of like, 
the emails that are happening, the podcasts that are being entered into CMSs, the recording that is being done. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Look, this is starting to feel like the actual work now, not the work that needs to be done to enable the, the, the doing of the work. You know what I mean? Uh, which, granted, you know, again, still a lot of like bank account stuff to figure out and so forth there, but it's starting to feel normal. It's starting to feel like real life now, finally. Oh, which good. Is, is, is calming in a way. Yeah. This is maybe an analogy that won't help you at all, but believe it or not, I've thought way too much about this stuff. That's the greatest curse is it's complete freedom and then you just focus too much on it and you get really <laughs> up in your head about it. But I always think of it, it's a very dumb 3D platformer angle. But I think of Patreon, it's like, okay, we got like a, a pool of water above just a sheer cliff drop. And then the Patreon just determines how much water's in that pool. And you're swimming in that pool. And sometimes it can be full, sometimes it's a little more empty, but if it ever goes to zero, then you just fall to your death. And if I could just leave you with <laughs> Thanks, that man. as a comforting image, I don't know if that helps anyway. Wow. Wow, that's great. Wow, I feel great. Yeah. <laughs> I have fears of both falling and drowning, so thank you. Yeah, yeah, anything I can do. Yeah. Um, are you guys, um, you mentioned, you know, potential futures a little bit there, Vinny, but like, are you locked in on it being the three of you as the core and then potentially maybe expanding a little bit beyond that on the edges? Or do you have a rough idea of where you'd like to grow this thing? Yeah, uh, so I think right now we're pretty focused on getting our fundamentals Right, I, boy, that sounded very PR. Yeah, uh, you're, you're like a basketball coach, dude. You know, we just got to work on our fundamentals. We got to execute. You know, we got to run the triangle offense here. Make sure that we get it. You know, get it. Get the ball in the hoop. Wow, great question, Ben. Uh, <laughs> um, you, you know, it's 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 one of those things where, but uh, seriously, we um, we we've got we're we're right now we're juggling. A lot of behind the scenes stuff with trying to make sure we have a forward facing content plan moving forward. Uh, and so the scale which we're at now is is where we kind of envisioned this thing. That, that was our, when we talked about our content plan, it was the three of us. Yeah. So what comes after that is kind of going to depend on when the dust settles and what we want to do and where it makes sense to plug holes, where it makes sense to kind of expand. Uh, and where it makes sense to uh, uh, financially, you know, again, it's it's one of those things where we want to make sure people are compensated for for kind of contributing and, and helping out. We want to make sure that um, we are able to um, make make living wages ourselves and, and kind of keep this thing going for as long as possible and not burn out or not make bad financial choices. So a lot of it is up in the air at this point. I I don't think any of us really, and I, I hate to speak for Alex and Brad, but I don't think any of us are like aiming to have this thing turn into a thousand person company. Like I really don't think that was never the talk there. It was always like something small, something uh, um, a little cozier, something, something that we can always, if it, something we can always feel like, Hey, we're not compromising on what we're doing to kind of cast a wider net or as wide a net as we can possibly scoop up every single person who has to watch every video game thing. Yeah. We want to, we want to, we want to play the things we want to do the things we want to talk about the things we want to cover the things we want to, cover and it's great if people want to come along with us and we really appreciate that but if they don't we want that to be okay too we, yeah. we, we don't have to want to have to bend to kind of catch everyone that's i mean that that ben i'm sure you're very familiar with this as well like that is the that is the reason i am so grateful to the support specifically from our patrons because we don't have to chase the scale that you need on on twitch and youtube to make a living right right you need massive you need if, if, if those platforms are your only sources of revenue you need massive numbers on there to support even one, much less two, three people, right? But being able to go directly to a smaller audience who is willing to support us in a more kind of engaged way lets us not have to like, you know, kind of mutate our content to, to you know, we don't have to run hype trains all the time on streams. Right, like right. You don't have to talk uh, about Zack Snyder on YouTube every other day. It's like, it's fine, right, just leave that aside. Right, like, like we basically can do the stuff we like doing and that we hope people who watch our stuff like doing until they leave, right? Like until yeah. until those people vote with their their feedback or their wallets that we're not doing what they like anymore. Like it's it's much more liberating to kind of do our thing and and hope that it's sustainable. That way. Yeah, and I, I will just say for my part, you know, I I don't consider the concept of growth, you know, a dirty word necessarily. I would love for us to grow down the road, you know, to to meet the needs uh, of our audience and our community. But I think we're going to do that at a scale that makes sense to us and at a pace that makes sense to us so that we aren't overextending ourselves and we aren't burning ourselves out again, you know, and, and bringing people into a situation where it's not stable. Like we want to do that yeah. when we're ready. Yeah. Right. yeah, yeah that's, that's, really a, that's, a, that's a question of process, I think, as much as anything, uh, in, in addition to the financials, because 
you know, we are nowhere near peak efficiency right now just on putting out our own no. content, right? Like we, we've got tons of, we've got weeks of iteration of a weekly schedule to figure out like, okay, where can we tighten things up? Like what schedules do we need to move around? Like how can this tech process be made more efficient? Stuff like that. Yeah. Because, you know, bringing new people on, conceiving new content for them to be in, like mentoring them, like that's all overhead as well. And so we need to make sure we need to make sure we have time for that kind of overhead and yeah. maximize their time. I think and it's a so really smart. Yeah, just slow that's, and that's, steady. Yeah, it's going to it's going to be an iterative thing, I think. Yeah. Vinny, um, close your yeah. eyes for me. Just just imagine two years from now, mm. what's mission accomplished for Next Lander? What's a success in your mind? Um, well, I don't wake up in a cold sweat, okay. uh, uh, every, every morning. I don't wake up in a hot sweat either. Uh, cause, that, cause that's nice. Just a nice room temperature um, sweat. Yeah. It, it's funny you say that because I, I keep saying to myself, I, I think I feel like more and more I am closing my eyes being like, I just, I, I just want to be at year one. I, I want, <laughs> I want all of the, like, like Brad just said, all of the processes and all those things to, cause we, we know how this stuff goes. Like I want them to, the cadence to have been established, the, you know, the, the interaction with the audience, the kind of, um, um, the content contract with the audience of like, you now know what we're putting up, you know what you're getting, you're like all of that to have been established, but we're in the building phase of that. And that's exciting, but also, uh, nerve wracking. So in two years, in two years, I hope that there is, um, uh, a buffer. I, I'm just going to talk from the business end too. Yeah. A buffer uh, on the on the business where we feel like we're very secure. Like, hey, this is something we're either doing or we're not doing, right? Uh, and and not in question, right? Either in two years I have a full time job and I'm doing something else, or in two years this is my full time job and we're doing because it, we it's been proven that it works. So that being said, a, a buffer where we know this works, we have some runway on it. Um, I would say we have uh, established a network of people we love collaborating with, people that we love bringing in, people that we a stable of people that we are like this is awesome. We've built a giant community, both in people that contribute to content and people that are in our community, and we have our own. Um, now we have our own mannerisms in our community. Like they, all of that is going and. Uh, next lander doesn't sound funny to say. It sounds, you know, it's it's a thing that is is very comfortable saying. We've established our own identity, right? It, it is not just oh, these are the people that were at this. Totally, right? it is now no. These this is the, these are the people that do next lander, right? Uh, and and that's to me would be a great mission accomplished in two years. Having our own identity, having a, a stable of people we we are comfortable working with in a process, and all of those things kind of ironed out. Yeah. That's beautiful. Well said. Anything else we didn't hit? Oh, Ben, when does uh, when does it get uh, when when do my when do my bowels stop feeling liquid? Uh, oh, when, <laughs> when, I think when is that sleeping a, through the night? Yeah. When can I unclench? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it, yeah. If I could leave you with one message, I know I said it a thousand times, but like you can all relax. Like it's not as rickety as you think it is. Think of it. That sounds like, like a lie. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, uh, <laughs> it's it's thousands and thousands of little bricks making up this wall, and it would take a hell of an explosion to tear it all down right there's a lot of people individually choosing and it's i don't know what it is with me and metaphors and analogies but it's just it's a bed of nails there's so much that it's you can't get hurt from it there's so many people out there you can lay down and relax you know um so it's it, it feels scary it always feels like it's going to collapse at any moment um but as i'm talking to you i realize i'm just talking to myself so just realize that okay. it's a it's somehow it works out and it's more secure than you think so you can go ahead and and feel confident about the future and start to try and and plan for for some big swings because that's what really you know hits home with the community is when you're showing look at this wild thing that in no way could have existed without each of you individually taking the chance to support us over on patreon i think the thing you said to me earlier on and when we were talking another time was try and enjoy it right and i and i i have remembered that and, and kept that in my mind of yes try and enjoy it and honestly, I mean, not to freak you out anymore. I mean, it, it doesn't get any better than this. I mean, you all have just been rewarded for a full career of busting your asses, talking into a mic. And now it's the greatest reward of the entire community saying, yeah, we heard you and we like you. We like you as people. Here's actual money from us to show how much we like you. And just the more you can enjoy that. And yeah, I mean, Brad, you got the right idea of just making sure that you're earning it as you go along. I mean... That's it. It's really that easy. Well, thanks again to everybody who has supported us. 
Uh, and thank you, Ben, for having us here to, to to talk about it. And congratulations, Ben, on on MinMax. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's been it's yeah. been really fun. Uh, people have been screaming. You, got, you do you do some great stuff. Thank I, you. I really do enjoy it. People yeah. have been screaming for a while, like, when are you going to have those three on? Like, I think within <laughs> seconds of you all announcing you're leaving, everyone's like, oh, Min Max, yeah. it's got a full slate of content. So thank you all <laughs> for finally jumping on. I really appreciate uh, your time. It's our, it's our pleasure. I'm glad um, I'm glad you had us here. Thank you. Yeah, Perfect absolutely. Year. Best of luck in the future. And thanks so much for watching thank and listening you. to this interview from Min Max. We have more in this YouTube playlist, or if you support us over on Patreon, support us both if you want. If you support us over on Patreon, you can unlock the podcast version of all of our interviews, Max spoilers, the deepest dive, all that fun stuff. So we appreciate this Support. Cool. Thanks so much, everybody. Bye. Content like this exists because of you. Thank you so much for subscribing on YouTube, sharing it with a friend, and especially for supporting MinMax on Patreon. Supporters at any tier on Patreon unlock access to MinMax's Discord, the friendliest place on the internet, where you can compete in game trivia every month to win prizes with our show Trivia Tower. Thanks so much for watching and sharing our stuff, everybody.